Okay, let's keep going with reflection in component four. So when we look at the reflection bullets, one, two, and three, we've already looked at this third one when we talked about the professional learning need in another video. So just check out that video on professional learning need um, to, to see this one. We really want to get in a reflective voice. And I do talk about this reflective voice. If you haven't been over in my initial challenge, you can see it and you can listen to me talk about it in the initial challenge. Um, I also teach you in depth the difference between the descriptive, analytical, and reflective voices for the National Board inside of my Assessment Drives Instruction course for Component 4, where you put together your Component 4 portfolio as you go. Anyway, let's looking, let's think about reflection and let's think that um, this is you really looking at yourself under a microscope, trying to help the assessor understand what you're thinking. They need to know what you're thinking and what you're feeling about your work. So the first bullet is you're really to helping them to see, like, do you feel like your work was effective in developing knowledge of the students that you teach in this particular group? So yes or no, when you think about it. Now, if, if it wasn't, you don't lie and say it was. Always tell the truth. No, it, it wasn't as effective as I thought it would be because X, Y, Z. Or yes, you know, it was really effective and this is what I learned. So then it goes on to want you to talk about in the future, what different approaches or additional steps might you take to further enhance your knowledge of children and why? You know, let me come back to you and say this. All right, did you notice how they gave you that second prompting question that essentially says, hey, excuse me, teacher, let me know what you might do different in the future. Even though you thought you did fabulous this first time, give me some things you might do different in the future or that might enhance your knowledge of your students. Answer that question. Don't just leave it because you thought everything was great. That is not how we do this reflection. We need, we have three pages. It, I mean, the assessor can find so much evidence in these three pages. So make sure you stay in the reflective voice to say, although I felt like I did a really great job, I recognize I could in the future. Uh, this is what I would potentially do. I will study and da, 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 da. Okay. All right. Back to the document. The second bullet. How has your assessment practice evolved as you have gained knowledge of the children you teach and learned from your experiences? Okay, so again, this is a learning process. The National Board for Professional Teaching Standards has developed this process so you can grow. It's almost like you're unclothing yourself and you're redressing yourself as a teacher. And so they want to know that you are recognizing where you were to where you are now. So it's like inch stones to milestones type thing. So what, what changed in you and evolved as you looked at your students in the beginning, you continued to look at your students through the formative and then through the self-assessment and finally through the summative, which you connected back to the formative. You know, what were your interactions with colleagues, children's families, caregivers, and other community members, or your participation in professional development opportunities and learning communities? How have you evolved in those areas? How have you grown? This is just really being reflective. Think, um, let's, let's think in the mindset of like a baby growing from being a newborn infant to a year old. How would you reflect on that whole first year that's full of milestones? What, what would your voice sound like? That's what your voice needs to sound like here in this yellow prompt that's full of questions, okay? And be very specific to the interaction with colleagues, children's families and caregivers, yeah, 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 because that's what they asked for. Give them what they ask for. 
The final question, considering the major areas of professional practice addressed in this entry, which they're telling you are developing knowledge of children, collaborating with others, using assessment and participating in learning communities, what is your plan for continuing to have a positive impact on children's learning and growth in the future? Now, my main role in the world of National Board Certification it has been helping renewal candidates for a very long time really navigate through the renewal process, which is now known as maintenance of certification. And so with that process, um, I have learned the incredible value of the question I just read to you. Because what we really want you to do and what you should want to do for yourself is make a plan for the next five years. What is it? What are you going to do? How are you going to continue to grow in those one, two, three, four areas? And it's really five if we broke them apart even more. That's your five core propositions for the National Board. How are you going to continue to grow and positively impact the students' learning, the students in your care, and your own growth in the future. That's what we want to hear. No, it hasn't happened yet. It's what is going to happen in the future. You answer that, you start setting yourself up beautifully for your renewal five years after you see the fireworks here on the initial side. Hey, keep up the good work. Keep growing big. Come over to TracyBryantStuckey.com if you want to be a part of the initial challenge that is free or the paid course um, assessment drives instruction for component four, where you actually build your portfolio. It's fun. Join us. Bye now.